Most people are entirely insincere about seeking knowledge and truth. Why is it that I conclude this? Well, it's because most people don't want to experience and so therefore they will never know truth. They will never know reality. All they will ever do is read books and watch videos and listen to other people's so-called truth. Even if you listen to the greatest scientists, to the greatest of gurus, and all this sort of stuff, you will never know anything. You will just, you would have just acquired so-called knowledge. Why I can speak about this like I do, giving you the impression that I'm not like that. It's because I'm not like that, as lots of you would know. And the reason why I'm not like that is because I've always known that it is my personal experience which is going to tell me how the world is. And so this is why I've done a whole myriad of jobs in my life. I've run a myriad of businesses. I've travelled to a myriad of countries and I've experienced a myriad of lives. And so then, whilst I was experiencing those things, I was immersed within it. I became a part of it. When I go to different cultures, I immerse myself in that culture and I experience what it is to live like that and I make inquiry into why they do this and why they think that and sometimes I try to do it try to put myself into that realm of being born into that culture and thinking in a certain way trying to think from their perspective and I would often ask them what is their perspective of my country? The one I derive out of, England. What do they think about America? What do they think about the West? What misconceptions do they have? Of course, one of the greatest misconceptions is that everybody is rich in the West, which is, of course, a fallacy. It's just that the standards are different. Many people, they live from week to week. And if they don't earn their weekly wage, then there's nothing in the coffers. And so how's that rich? It just looks rich, doesn't it? Because comparatively, they live in a house, they drive a car, and they've got nice clothes, and they watch a television, and all this sort of thing. But it's no more rich in actual fact, it's probably more impoverished than people living in third world countries because the chances are they've got crops and foodstuffs in the ground which they can pull out of the ground next week and the week after and the week after that. You see? And so their sustenance doesn't dry up overnight like it does in the West because basically we're living on a shoestring and if that shoestring should be severed where do we look for our sustenance go groveling to the government for support hmm these people living in third world countries lots of them if hunting is in their culture they go out and hunt or they kill one of their animals this sort of thing so that wasn't the point of this video. The point of this video is that most people will never, never know truth. And so I want to give you a few analogies of why I'm saying this. And in this last year, predominantly, I've been delving into some deep esoteric stuff. 
And one of the people I've been listening to is a guy called Rudolf Steiner. And Rudolf Steiner is relatively, in small circles, notorious for certain books he's wrote, How to Know Other Worlds. And in this book, he speaks about other worlds and other bodies, i.e. the astral body, the ethereal body, the sensual body, the human body. And when you look into cross-referencing and all this sort of thing, you will discover that many religions and philosophers, theosophists, are speaking about different bodies. And it can be like, if you've not had that experience, oh, la -di -da -di -da, you know, how real is that? You can read and read and read. How real will it ever become? So I was speaking to Paul about an hour ago. And I said, look, in some of these books, they talk about that the human being can live in the human form forever. Eternal. Of course, we all have to look at that with a great deal of scepticism because we haven't ever seen anybody that seemingly looks like they've lived forever. What does a person that's lived forever look like? I.e. Hermes Trismestigus, thousands of years old, taking on board different forms and going to live in different realms and all this sort of thing. It's written about so prolifically in history through many millennia. And so there's lots of people that talk about the immortals and you look at it and you think, well, it sounds incredulous. Until you know a little bit of something about what they're speaking about, i.e. When people talk about the human body, the material body, then they talk about the astral body. I can go, I know about the astral body. I've experienced my astral body. It took me three months, every single day, for about three hours a day, or at the night time, whatever. I always, used to calculate everything because I always wanted to know, and I still do unconsciously. I calculate how many hours I've put into playing the guitar, and I know it's approximately 10,000, you know, due, due to how many hours I play a day or week, and then, you, you know, you, you do the math. But it took me 150 hours before I had my first astral projection. And from that very first experience, I knew then that there was such a thing as the astral realm, which to most people is incredible. And most people would scoff and not believe or even think like, so what? Because they don't know the magnitude of what it is to actually go out in your astral body and experience the astral realm. They've got no comprehension whatsoever, other than maybe if they watched a video what does it mean to them? It doesn't mean anything until you've experienced it. And so because I experienced that, now I can lend myself to thinking that there is a certain veracity to the eternal being. The same people write about the same things and say, talk about these various bodies where they derive from and uh, what their purpose is and what their stage of evolution is, all this sort of stuff. Rudolf Steiner. When you get into this and when you want to experience it, that's when you start to know it. And that's when the whole world then becomes incredibly incredible with enormous potential. 
to know other worlds. How to experience something other than the human being. Lots of people, they practice lucid dreaming, whereby you become awake in a dream, and then you can do whatever you want to do. You're in a different world. You're in a world which you create in an instant. You can be the hero, you can be the victim, you can fly, you can be awesome. You think about something and you're there in an instant, in an instant. You become this variety of God that only has to have a thought and it makes manifest. Doesn't that sound marvellous to you? And so then when you're in an astral projection, you can meet beings from the astral. They can very often look like the human. They can also look like shadow beings and any number of spooky things. Aliens, scarecrows, beasts, all this sort of thing. And so, let me move on now to something which isn't potentially so scary. Lots of people will go, I ain't going there. I ain't having nothing fiddling around my arsehole. Or female succubuses dragging me out of bed and having sex with me and no way. They might be demons. They're just draining your energy and all this sort of stuff. Well, in my experience, I only gained energy from those experiences. Feeling amazing at having those experiences. Wow! What a blast! Changing my paradigm in an instant as to how I look at this world. So if we look at meditation, and again with my meditation, I seem to remember, because I've been meditating over five years now, that it took me about three or six months before I knew what all the fuss was about, before I knew what all these gurus were talking about and all these Buddhists were banging on about, until I put hours and hours of my time against it, I only had a concept of what they were talking about and it meant nothing to me. But after three or six months, I had this experience whereby I woke up. What actually happened was, I was meditating every day, sometimes five hours a day. I'm really quite an intense person when I have a desire to do something. Like playing the guitar, I'll play every single day. Sometimes for five or six hours, but every day I'm playing. And so, if you apply that sort of tenacity and determination to something, then you can make things manifest. And so I was in this meditation on one occasion. And then, prior to that, I used to get all different sorts of crazy noises going on. I used to get like what would appear to be, the only way I could describe it was like meteorites flying from the far distance and coming and going Whoa! through my mind. And then there was great noises. And it's, you open your eyes and it's like... And then there'd be brilliant flashes of purple and electric blues with like a boo, which sometimes would almost make me jump out of my body. And this used to happen a great deal when I was lying down meditating. And sometimes I'd actually left the bed through the shock of it. But that wasn't experiencing the nothingness. How the nothingness came about is on one occasion, there was just like a boo within my mind and it instantly became super, super clear and expansive, enormous, enormous vastness of emptiness, but seemingly full of everything. And then when you equate this to quantum physics, you can go, I know what you mean now. When you're talking about 
The universe is just potential. There's nothing there except energy, waveforms of energy. And it's only through consciousness that anything derives out of it. And so I went in to this realm, which was exactly that. Instinctively, I knew it was pure potential. It encompassed everything there is to know. Hang on. Where was I, I wondered. I said to myself in my mind, I said, Hello? Naively, like expecting somebody to say, Oh, welcome! You finally made it then. Come into the pure nothingness. But nothing answered back. There's nothing to answer back. And so I just sat there in my meditation. And again, I just slipped back into the, the non-thinking. And I was there. And I was just... I was just feeling, I was just the isness. It's difficult to explain. I was just being there, in it, with it, of it. And I stayed there for about 15 minutes until in the end, I started laughing at the absurdity of it. And I opened my eyes and I went, is that it? Is that what all this bullshit Buddha is all about? It's bullshit. It's boring. There's nothing there. Can you see the absurdity of that? I contemplated and contemplated and I thought about that and I thought, I made it, I made it. I got into the nothingness. If it wasn't through my sheer desire and determination, I would never experience what all those people were talking about. You see? You see how your knowledge can increase exponentially. Within a second, if you put the time and effort into it. And so I knew then what that was about. But there's something about it that was very alluring and it felt good. And so, oh, I'm going back there again. I'm going to do some more exploring. Go back there, go back there. Sometimes you can get back there. Often you can go for weeks and you can't get back to that absolute pool, that opening of it. it's a rare thing most meditations you get into a nothingness but you don't you know you're still in the world you're not thinking but you know you're still in the world you've got a bodily and a worldly knowledge about you you feel the wind and the sun on your face and you feel you're sitting down and stuff like this. But when you go so deep, it's like an out-of-body experience. There's nothing. Your body doesn't exist. And it's remarkable. And so I've been addicted to that ever since. And I don't go into each one of my meditations. Oh, I want that. I want this. I want that. Because you should never do that. Never anticipate anything, never desire nothing. You just meditate for the sake of it, because it feels good. Rest assured that one day, out of the blue, you'll have another marvellous experience, which will make it all the worthwhile for maybe the couple of years that you never had anything of that magnitude before. But you'll get one. And then there's another facet of this universe which will open up to you, which you can say that you know. Personal subjective experience. And so, then, let me speak about psychedelics. When people are speaking about all this wacky stuff, it, it, they may as well be speaking about a dream. You kind of like half listening, but you, you're not really. You're thinking, I don't know what you're on about, mate. You know, it could be this and it could be that. And anyway, you know, it doesn't sound, you know, so great to me. It's only a dream. There's no reality to it and all this sort of thing. And so we're very dismissive. And those of you that haven't took psychedelics and DMT, you listen to me banging on about it. 
You don't know it, do you? Some of you may be thinking like, oh, I kind of like know what you're on about, but unless you've had that experience and you've been into the DMT world, you don't know. As soon as you've been into the psilocybin world, the DMT world, the acid world, all of a sudden, another huge portion of this thing opens up. So you can say, you know, you see. And so, what I labor on about in many of my videos is the benefit and necessity of experience. Get out there and do it. Have the design, the willpower, the tenacity, the drive, the metal to stick at something and do it. And boldly go where you have never been before. You see, with all of the stuff I've read about psychedelics and all of the stuff I've read about astral projection, I never, ever listened or read anything which related to any of my experience. I'm looking around the whole of the internet. I'm looking for videos that talk about being touched up or being pulled out of your bed by two beautiful women saying, put them down here, do this and do this. And then they're having full on sex and I'm like, is this for real? It is for real, jeez. You know, it's all going down. I never heard anything about that. I heard very mediocre and weak descriptions of people's experience. And it was nothing like that. My DMT experiences. I've never heard anybody speaking about the love on DMT. Never. I'm like... It's unfathomable. And so, don't listen is what I'm saying to other people because other people's experience is their experience. Now, I'm not a fear-based person, and so I don't go into psychedelics thinking about all the spooky shit that could happen to me. I go into them with a confidence, with a welcoming, with a, with a, a loving. I'm gonna see me. I'm gonna see another facet of me. What, are I, what have I got to be afraid of? Getting to know me. In the actual world, oh, suck your burst, they suck your energy and they do this, really? When I come out of psychedelics or astral projection, I've got bounding energy. Bounding positivity. Even when the stupid, some stupid spooky shadow thing comes to fuck with me, I just go, get the fuck out of here. Did you think I was a pussy? Huh? I'll fucking beat you if you come back again. <laughs> it's attitude. It's what you create. Since I said that and did that, they'll never come back again. What comes back? Beautiful women. I'm happy with that. Welcome, beautiful women. Let's get it on. I'm only here for a few astral seconds, so it best be quick. No fear, people. We're gods. And we create. And so if your ego, if your programs are telling you about all the nasty meanies out there, then that's what you're going to encounter. Makes sense, doesn't it? So by way of summary then, what am I saying here? I'm saying that we have to experience. And uh, I've said numerous times, uh, of, uh, of late about spending all your time in the scrying screen you've got to get out there and do it and if you look at something in the scrying screen and you decide that you want to know more about it then delve into that particularly and do the exercises because there's always exercises whether it's uh, Buddha whether it's Steiner whether it's Jesus you know, through your prayer and your belief and your consistency, doing the good thing and being a good person, it's all, it's all labour, it, it, it's all 
working towards something. And so if you want to experience these marvellous feelings and different varieties of, of human being and different variety of seeing the world, I, I will never see the world like I, I saw it before I took psilocybin. Fact changed in an instant. My mind woke up to the beauty that I've been missing. Even though I enjoyed it at one level, my God, the psilocybin level is a whole different ball game. And now, that's how I see it. Not as accentuated as when you're in a big session, but it's always there. So what have I done? I've opened myself again, you see. So open yourselves, people. And don't be afraid, because there's nothing to be afraid of except fear itself. So, use your rational mind, eliminate your fears, and go forth and experience.